It's Wednesday morning in the Eastern Oregon community of Halfway. Hello, Hello Marine. How are you today? Where do, where do we need to go today? And Dave Myhill is the most popular guy in town. D and B. Dave is a part-time driver for Community Connection of Baker County. On Wednesdays, he transports riders on what the locals call the senior bus. It's 50 miles from halfway to Baker City. Another 50 miles back. And each leg of the journey is an adventure. In Eastern Oregon especially, it's a long ways between communities and in the wintertime, it's an exceptionally long ways between communities. And so that one day a week they get on the bus to come to Baker is the epitome or the zenith of their life for that week. Baker County has for many years been one of the higher percentages of seniors uh, in population. Right now, we're looking at about 24% of those over 60 and I think we're about 19% and have been about that for people over 65. Most of these individuals are uh, senior citizens and uh, some of them are in their 90s. We try to make it comfortable for them, and relaxed atmosphere for them so they're not uh, worried and they're not uh, concerned about if they're gonna make it to their appointment on time or if they're gonna be left or how long they have to wait. Hello. I'm Delma Hardlick and I'm the okay. here at 10 or so. I use the bus most of the time when I'm coming out to, to, to Baker. Mostly doctor's appointments. I have uh, had recently doctor's appointments with my eyes and I am gradually getting a, a macular degeneration in my right eye which I feel if it gets too much worse, I won't be able to drive. In Oregon, right now, uh, there's about half a million folks who are over the age of 65. We know that in the next 20 years or so, that number is gonna over double. And a, a large portion, at least 25% of those people, cannot drive because of physical uh, disabilities, vision, or other things. And therefore, their only way to get to a doctor's office get to work, uh, get to the grocery store, is via public transit. Ready to go, Dave? Yeah, we're ready to head out. Okay. Curry County is another area where distances between communities are long and critical services few and far between. So residents living along Highway 101 rely on the Coastal Express which travels 110 miles from North Bend to Brookings four times a day. Good morning. 74-year-old Bill Dooley is a regular on the Port Orford to Brookings leg. I commute about 64 miles each way each day that I work down here, and I work down here five days a week in most instances. What have we found out on that uh, 22 unit? Bill manages Curry Public Transit, which consists of the inner city coastal express and in-town on-demand vehicles. Both services run six days a week, and according to Bill, demand is high. We are almost 50% population over 60 at the present time in the Brookings Harbor area. Uh, the total in the county, I have been told, runs a, between 35 and 40% population over the age of 60. See you in a little while. But I rely on the dollar ride. They take me out to the beauty shop, then I call 2.30 to go home. And everybody knows that I ride it, so if I'm five minutes late or 10 minutes early, it's fine. You got Bill, right? I did get Bill, yes. Our service allows them to continue to be independent far longer than they would be able to be if we were not in existence in the area. It's vitally important that these people be able to hang on, to, so to speak, to that independence as long as they can. Wayne, this is exciting. For Bob Bergman of Eugene, independence means the ability to get to work on time. 
Bob is a pretty mir miraculous uh, young man for uh, the difficulties that he has, I think. Uh, he's now 55 years old, so uh, we have uh, gone through 55 years of dealing with uh, differences. Because he was a preemie, uh, he had this cerebral palsy and did take him in for physicals, of course, and was referred to an ophthalmologist. And I suppose that that was a, a very landmarking day, the day that I was told he was blind hard. Today, Bob works at Oregon Research Institute. It's a job he loves and a job that benefits his community. We've seen a transformation of Bob that's just been unbelievable. He likes to have fun, he likes to do a lot of things, and the Lane Transit District's opportunity of riding the bus has allowed him to do that. They want to be meaningful and, and productive members of society. So without these services, uh, it, it would be a sad day for the state of Oregon and a sad day for a number of residents. If I didn't have the city bus, I'd be stuck at home. Doing what? Oh, just playing with my CB radios. It's all a big pie where you cut it into, you know, living, working, and social. And it takes transportation to do every single one of them. I think you'll realize very quickly that, you know, a number of people in your immediate family probably need that type of assistance. Where family members and friends are unable to provide that service, that's where the public transit division and our program step up to try to help. The main source of funds that's available for community transportation services are federal funds which we can flex out of the highway appropriations and those funds primarily are used for equipment acquisitions. We flex as much as we can. We work with the local districts to maximize our ability to stretch those funds as far as possible, but we never have enough. It's more than tires, gasoline, and a vehicle. It's a social support system that is just critical. It just opens doors that we never would have imagined. And if we can make that happen for folks, all folks, not just folks with disabilities, then it will be a much better community. It's good stuff. <clears throat>